All right, guys, welcome back to the Clack Shack. And uh, today I got a little, uh, a little bit of uh, answering some questions and a little bit of just, I guess I'm gonna brag on my new machine. Uh, finally got my X2 D1 Pro. I got the 20 watt Pro. Got it in, got it installed, uh, and I got it in there working right now because my friend May May has once again placed an order for a hundred of the uh, ink bandits that uh, we kind of collaborated on. So I've got to turn out a hundred of those guys. Now the good news is the new machine is here and it is significantly faster than what I'm used to. So I'm, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about the new X tool, the new D1 Pro 20 watt. And I'm also gonna answer the question that everybody keeps asking me, do you have to have a different computer for each laser. Uh, as you can probably see behind me, I'm running out of, uh, out of uh, counter space. I've still got some work to do, but I have behind me two additional lasers set up, connected to light burn with jobs ready to go. So we're gonna, we're gonna go through that. I'm gonna show you, uh, show you how that works. So stick around for a few minutes while I get everything uh, moved around. All right, guys, I'm gonna be off camera to show you this, uh, but I got my, my pro in there cutting out some uh, ink bandits, and I'm just gonna walk this camera around. Uh, and I don't have a, a, a proper spool board or anything set up in there on the D1 yet for the 10 watt, but I got through a piece of scrap lumber in there and I'm burning a compass rose on the X2 D1 10 watt. And then I got the little Adam stack over here, I lovingly call Junior. I got him uh, working on a small engrave that says gather on a scrap piece of wood. Uh, so these aren't necessarily jobs that I have going, but I have all three of these lasers currently running off of this machine. And uh, I'll try to get over there and uh, just kind of explain to you. But what I've got, let me, let me move my camera around here. I'm gonna set the camera back here where you can see everything maybe. Let's kind of turn that around here. There we go. You can see them all three getting after it right there. Uh, I've, still got some, I've still got some work to do. Uh, I'm gonna have to build me a little bit uh, more, uh, a better spool board. This table was a, originally a woodworking and mechanicing table and it is not perfectly flat. So I'm gonna have to, uh, to do some work on that. But what I've got guys, and, and it's as simple as this, and I told some people based on my knowledge of computers that it should be possible. Uh, but as a waiver for you guys, this computer is one that I was, uh, I used it to do some pretty intense uh, computer work on. And in its heyday, which is probably about six or seven, maybe even eight years old now, this is actually a uh, HP's version of a gaming PC. So it's got some pretty robust uh, internals in it. Now for a modern day gaming PC, it wouldn't cut you know, some of the new games, but for, you know, for eight years ago, that's where this thing was built. But I have upgraded to Windows 10. The way that Lightburn is working right now on all three machines, and I have them all three going and uh, cutting different designs if they haven't finished. Okay, Junior's through with his. Uh, the D1 is still working. Uh, and the uh, pro has finished the bandits. But the way that it works is each machine gets assigned a port number. So the way it's working right now, uh, I'm gonna tell you what I've got over here. The D1 is on COM3. Uh, my pro is on COM5. And junior is on COM6. So the, if, if I were gonna give you any advice on doing this, because it took me a second, basically I just had to see which one my, my D1 was using, my Pro was using, and then I, I went to the other two and selected them and tried to home just to see which one homed, but I had to put it on the appropriate profile. But what I would do is I would, you know, get me a piece of tape or something and tape to the top of my computer in case it changes, you don't really want to do anything too permanent, but a piece of painter's tape and a Sharpie, and you, you can make yourself a, a, just a list of 
what COM ports associated with which machine. That way when you launched Lightbird, all you would have to do is select the appropriate COM port and then whether it's uh, the Atom Stack or the D1 or the D1 Pro, then you would select which machine you were wanting to uh, operate with that uh, window of Lightburn. And I've got three different, three different instances of Lightburn going over here right now. So that's how it's doing this. Uh, the D1 has completed the compass rows. Uh, got that on there. It worked. I'm gonna throw this back in the scrap pile. Now, this was just for demonstration purposes. And Junior has done a good job on the gather. So uh, Junior, I keep, him, I keep him for small jobs. Cutting is really not his strong suit, uh, but that is the Atom Stack. And, and guys, there's a lot of freebies in this video. So I'm gonna have to mark this to keep YouTube off my back. But we're gonna go through here and I'm gonna show you what all I've got set up on these other machines right quick as well. All right, guys, y'all probably recognize this, uh, this enclosure. Uh, this enclosure was sent to me to try out, and I've been using it a lot on my, my stove covers when I do them because it's really big, and it'll actually sit around the, the edge of the stove cover. I stuck it on Junior over here more or less because it's, this one's a little taller, and I've got to do something with the DeWalt wall here in order to, uh, in order to uh, get it my tools out of the way. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at probably going to have to overhaul some stuff here. Uh, but this is the Atom Stack P9 M40 that Atom Stack sent me to try out. And like I said, it's, it's, it's not a 20 watt. It's not a, this is a five watt or five and a half watt. Then I've got my 10 watt and now I've got my 20 watt over here. Uh, but this little guy does a good job at engraving. And uh, if that's all you plan on doing, I mean, I, so far I have no complaints with it. It works pretty well. Uh, and then of course, this is the enclosure that we tried to set fire to. Uh, it's bigger than the, uh, the latest one that I have, but you know, it depends on your application. But I'll, I'll put links to these guys in the description also in case you see anything that you like. Uh, but this is not permanent. I've just got this set up temporarily until I can get some enclosures built just for uh, Fluffy and the rest of the, my feline friends just for, for their sake, so they don't get anywhere they shouldn't be or you know get their eyes hurt. Uh, this machine is, of course, and I'm gonna take the cover off of, uh, off of it here for a second. Well, yeah, let me, uh, let me just move it out where you can see it. Uh, what I have done though, guys, is my friends at ComGrow sent me, and it was just in time too, guys, because I just got my Pro and you know i wanted to put my i wanted to put my air assist on my pro so comgrow sent me a air assist kit that was specifically designed for the x tool let me get you up here a little closer and so I've, i went ahead and i've got that installed uh their kit comes with a cover that's it's it's metal you can't see through it uh so i mean i guess that's a little more eye protection uh, it, it's unique in the fact that you can actually take this cover off the way it's slotted without having to take the air assist nozzle out. The air assist, th this little elbow is very, very similar to the one that X-Tool uses and so is this piece. I mean, it's, it, it is really similar. The one thing that I will tell you is ComGrow, and I, I've got a picture of it. I'll try to drop that in there as well. ComGrow designed their nozzle their air assist nozzle is significantly shorter than the one that X-Tool provides. So a lot of that spatter and obstructions that we were getting with the X-Tool one or some of y'all were getting, I never really had a problem with it. Uh, it shouldn't be as bad with this guy because it doesn't stick down towards the material as far. Uh, it also uses a recessed Allen screw, uh, retention screw instead of those two screws that everybody said blocked their uh, crosshairs. And because this cover is solid it doesn't refract the light now it does reflect a little bit of the light so you've got a little bit of red showing up on the outside of the cross there but because that color cover is solid and doesn't allow the light to pass through it you don't get that broken line look so that's you know it looks cleaner i mean the, the broken line never really bothered me but if you're one of those folks that it does bother then you know there you go uh the compressor for the com grow is over here 
I've kind of got it nestled in the in the corner. And the one thing that the one complaint I have with it is the power cable is not very long, and the control knob is right next to the compressor. Uh, it does it does have a variable speed, and I think that's good. It's got pretty good air pressure. I haven't used it that much so far, but uh, it seems like a, a, a definitely for what this machine is going to be doing, which is primarily engraving. It seems that it has more than adequate airflow for uh, the engraving I'm going to be doing with the 10 watt. Uh, but anyway, as we move over, here is my setup with the Pro. Uh, it took me a little while to get the cable management like I wanted it. I was not happy with the way that it came out in the beginning. And here's some uh, ink bandits being burned. But the thing that I have learned is with this machine, my 4.5 millimeter material, I am running it single pass, seven millimeters per second, 100% output, and I am getting clean drops with this Luon that you know everybody despises. I am getting clean drops, smooth edges, and it looks great. So. And now on this machine, I am running the, uh, this is all X-Tool. Like, this is the X-Tool Air Assist kit that I already had that I had bought for my D1. The only variations or, you know, things that I did that's not X-Tool's design is I made me some, I put me some little clips here to hold my cables down, which that one doesn't seem to be holding very well. Uh, there may end up being some small screws put in those before we're said and done. Uh, but I'm just going to wait a few days and just make sure nothing breaks before I go to but before I go to put screw holes in there. But so far, everything works great. I'm not having any issues out of it. The firmware stuff, y'all saw that in my video. It was a uh, it was a success and worked really well. So give me just a minute. I'm going to move the camera and uh, we'll continue our discussion. All right, guys, but uh, let me turn some of this stuff off where it won't be as noisy. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I am really liking the X-Tool, the, uh, the new 20-watt. So far, uh, the cutting power is just, it is, it's, it is leaps and bounds beyond what the 10-watt was capable of. Like I said, I went from running, uh, I was running 5 to 6 millimeters a second and taking four passes. I, I actually did get it down to where I was doing four millimeters per second, but it, it was still occasionally would have a hang after three passes. So I've been running four passes just to make sure. But when I got the pro up and going, I've been doing a little testing this afternoon, getting ready to start cranking out these ink bandits. Uh, and so I have managed to find my sweet spot on this material. Seems to be seven millimeters per second at 100% power, uh, full air assist. And of course I'm running the honeycomb and all that, but it is blazing through these things. Uh, my burn time, if you remember, my burn time with my, my 10 watt to do three of these bandits, it was taking an, an hour for, for three of them. All right, with the 20 watt, I am now down to, with the exact same file, I am down to 11 minutes and 27 seconds to burn three. So that is significant gains. And when you're talking about trying to, you know, you got a customer like May May that, you know, says, hey, I want a hundred more. And she's got, got folks waiting on these things and they're ordering them. So I, I need to be able to turn them out quick. And so the added power is definitely, definitely a plus. And uh, one thing that I will throw in there for you guys that may not have a camera bless your heart i don't know how you do it uh it's been so long since i did not have a camera on my x tool i am really struggling trying to do any work on this guy over here without a camera so uh i will more than likely be building another enclosure similar to this one and uh i've, I've got to come up i've got to come up with either another fan or a bigger bigger fan system for the machine i've got an idea of something i think will work because if I'm gonna have two machines piped into my, my, my vacuum, 
I, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need something a little more substantial because this 20 watt guys is cranking out some serious, serious smoke. Now luckily, even, even cutting, like cutting this four and a half like that and cutting it as fast as I am, luckily as long as I keep the door shut and I let the airflow do what it's supposed to by design, I'm not having any issues, but I, uh, the other day I had the door open and had the fan blowing and I got a little bit of a crosswind in here and it started pulling some of the smoke out and it was ridiculous. So I've learned that with a 20 watt, I definitely got to keep the door shut because over here on the side where this hole is, where my cables go in, you can feel the, the air being pulled in. And as long as it's pulling the air in here, it's pulling that smoke out and getting rid of it. But uh, I didn't have a whole lot to go over tonight. Uh, the, the big question everybody was asking me was about are you going to be able to run multiple machines with one laptop or do you have to buy multiple laptops? Now, I will say this too, guys. This computer only has a couple of USB ports. So I'm actually running Junior over there off of a USB hub. So if, if that's a concern for you too, you know, will it work with a USB hub? I have got the cheapest USB hub that money can buy. And it's a uh, four port hub that I think I paid like 12 bucks for it. And Junior's engraving just fine on it. And I've got the uh, X-Tool 10 watt plugged into directly into my uh, computer as well as the, uh, the Pro. Those, both of those are plugged di directly into hard ports. But after seeing how well Junior did on it, uh, I'm not concerned about using a hub. So if you don't have enough USB ports and you want to run multiple machines, it appears, you know, from the, the USB that I'm using that that is a viable option. Uh, but like I said, the one thing that I would advise you to do is get you some, uh, I mean, I had thought about making me some nice little uh, engraved labels and putting on my enclosures, you know, COM port, uh, if this one was five, COM port six, COM port three. But sometimes when you install updates or you install another piece of equipment or you reboot your computer, those COM ports could move around. And so I think what I'm gonna wind up doing is I'm just gonna get me a piece of painter's tape and put above my monitor screen here and just write that down with a Sharpie pen so that I don't have to try to figure it out in case I forget because uh, my memory is not that great when it comes to numbers. And so I'm gonna probably be using that uh, keep it at simple approach there to uh, help me remember which COM port belongs to what machine. But that's pretty much it for tonight, guys. I'm trying to get the shop cleaned up a little bit. I did spray for bugs before I went on my trip out of town. And so the spider web situation is much better. Uh, the ants, all of the creepy crawly critters, uh, I think I got most of them. Uh, so I, I mean, I sprayed, I bought some, some really good, <laughs> bug spray and I hose this place down while I, before I left to go be gone for four days and it seems to be have been effective so uh, tomorrow I'm gonna have to be working on stove covers and getting those going because I've got like eight of those to do I've got a hundred of these uh, bandits for May May so it's it's back to the grind again guys and I've got some other orders that have came in as well a couple that I'm still trying to finish it is going to be a busy weekend so I may not be uh, very visible on YouTube until we get back to the week and in the afternoons when I can't start any big jobs. So uh, if you have any questions or anything, drop them in the comments. Uh, you can message me on my Facebook page at the Clack Shack. If you have a question, I'll try to get back with you. I know YouTube doesn't really afford you the opportunity to private message me, but you can go over to my Facebook page and uh, like that page and send me a message directly from there. I try to reply as quick as I can to uh, try to help everybody out. So, but that's all I got for you tonight, guys. I'm going to get back to uh, knocking out a few of these things before I go in the house. And uh, we'll see you next time. But hit that subscribe button on your way out, guys. Appreciate you.